How obsessive is too obsessive? I just, I have things a certain way. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 OCD characters in movies and TV. Will you at least go with me to the restroom here so you can open the door and flush the urinal? For this list, we're looking at the big and small screen characters that seem to have prominently visible obsessive compulsive disorder issues. These characters' OCD behaviors are much more than mere tendencies, and are more like necessities that need to be done repeatedly. However, they don't necessarily have to have been diagnosed with OCD to qualify. All set. Number 10, Kevin Casey, Scrubs. It's okay, you can say it. Just that you're, you're a doctor with pretty severe OCD. It's not a secret. I know. This doctor's obsessive compulsive disorder is as pronounced as his medical successes and would probably put fellow doctor Elliot Reed to shame. You know, I couldn't have survived in medicine if I didn't embrace my OCD. And since I was compulsive anyway, you know, I, I read the same textbooks over and over. I, uh, I went through the procedures over and over. I, Imagine every worst case scenario over and over and over. Constantly rereading his medical journals, he is a whiz at instantly diagnosing patients. Less charmingly, Kevin will still be washing his hands two hours after performing surgery, needs to enter and exit a building three times, and starts each day by saying, bink, and touching everything and everyone in his first patient's room. Pretty much, bink. Now, your patients on this wing have all been complaining about odd noises. Oh, if it's bink, I can explain. It isn't Bink. Stop saying Bink. Despite his quirks, Kevin is a good-hearted, talented surgeon that you can't help but cheer for. Yeah, the guy's been using up all my soap. Yeah, I've got OCD. Really? My grandpa had that. Every morning, you take a gym sock, fill it up with nickels, and just beat us. <laughs> That's OCD, right? Number nine, Monica Geller. Friends. Are you through with that? Mm. Yeah, sorry, the swallowing slowed me down. Monica is by far the most obsessively clean out of all her friends, going so far as to claim that Monica clean is above and beyond health department clean. He told me about your apartment, and, um, well, I, I couldn't sleep thinking about it. <laughs> so, uh, would it be okay if I cleaned it? <laughs> no? While this mother hen is certainly a great friend, she can be hard to handle at times. Some of her quirks include her tendencies to label the things she owns, to clean others' apartments, and to clean cleaning supplies. Oh, look at her. So happy. <laughs> While obsessive might not be a strong enough word, her beyond meticulously routine ways are still endearing to us. If only there were a smaller one to clean this one. Number eight, Bob Wiley. What about Bob? I have problems. In this Frank Oz comedy, Bob is an obsessive compulsive psychiatric patient with a lot of phobias. I worry about diseases, so uh, I have trouble touching things. Uh, in public places, it's, it's uh, almost impossible. I have a real big problem moving. After his first session with Dr. Leo Marvin, Bob becomes infatuated with the psychiatrist and ends up following Leo and his family to their vacation home. Bob, we agreed that I would call you. Your coming here is unbelievably inappropriate. One horrible thing leads to another, with Leo subjecting Bob to alleged death therapy, Bob overcoming his phobias, and then becoming a psychologist himself. Your death therapy cured me, Eugene! <laughs> What are you doing here? Bob's unfortunate situations and his easily likable personality make him one of the most grounded characters on this list, despite his manipulative and narcissistic behavior. Baby steps through the office. Baby steps out the door. Number seven, Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal. Special I hate agent. to be discourteous, but this is a private exit for my patients. Oh, Dr. Lecter. <laughs> Who would have thought that a cannibalistic serial killer would be OCD, and not just about the way he eats people? Served with a sauce of duxel and oyster mushrooms. This forensic psychiatrist and keen foodie is frequently shown arranging things throughout each episode, whether in private or with others. But reasonable in certain circumstances. This includes adjusting pencils on desks, making sure books are evenly spaced, and checking that a cell phone is aligned correctly with a desk corner. For these characters, these quirks might be cute or endearing, but for Hannibal, they just add to his already creepy vibe. And as this evening has already proven, it's nice to have an old friend for dinner. Number six, Felix Unger, the odd couple. 
Felix, this is my apartment. I make up the bedtime. Uh, look, you don't understand, Oscar. I just want to be alone for a while. Now, you go to bed, and I'm going to clean up. No, I have to clean up. Well, I can't sleep with a room like this. Unlike his laid-back and sloppy roommate, Oscar Madison, Felix is obsessed with cleanliness and is beyond neurotic. I've been sitting here breathing cleaning fluid and ammonia for three hours. Nature didn't intend for poker to be played like that. To further emphasize the divide between these roommates, we must point out that Felix is a detail-oriented news writer, whereas Oscar is a jockish, carefree sports writer. So if you knew you were gonna be late, why didn't you call me? In this black comedy, Felix obsesses over the shortcomings of others, though being subjected to his polar opposite in Oscar actually helps to slowly bring happiness into Felix's life. They really think we're enjoying ourselves. Well, they don't know. They just don't know what it's like living alone, do they? I'd be immensely grateful to you, Felix, if you didn't clean up just now. While Felix never really stops his OCD tendencies, he does become a lot easier to stomach once he calms down a bit. I don't think that two single men living alone in a big eight-room apartment should have a cleaner house than my mother. Number five, Adrian Monk. Monk. There's not enough stuffing in this bear, I think. There's something hidden in here. This former San Francisco Police Department homicide detective was great at his job. That is, until his wife was killed. Following that tragedy, his OCD was amplified dramatically and forced him to quit and only work as a consultant. I brush my teeth 12 times a day and I floss every 90 minutes. So you've never been to a dentist? Once! While Monk is still an effective detective, he constantly has to contend with fears that range from the more common like germs, crowds and heights, to the more bizarre like milk. How afraid are you? On a scale of 1 to 10. Ah, uh, 10? He'll also only drink one brand of water. While he isn't necessarily the best at defending himself, we still love to watch him try his best. Number four, Roy Waller, Matchstick Men. I'll be right with you, sir. This con artist is stricken with a heightened case of OCD and has his fair share of phobias as well as the occasional violent panic attack. This is an emergency. Hey, buddy, ever heard of a lie? Hey, have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and beat until you pissed blood? After discovering he has a 14-year-old daughter named Angela, Roy's happiness causes his phobias to subside. However, Roy and Angela go through a few ups and downs, which sees Roy learning the painful truth about his current life and the people in it. Run, Angela! Run! You run and daddy's dead and I'm here right now! Okay, okay. But fortunately, his life ultimately balances out, as he learns to live with himself and becomes who he wants to be. So I'm gonna see you on Tuesday? Well, I, why? I, I mean, I have the meds. Well, I guess that's your call. Okay. Take care. Number three. Melvin Udall, as good as it gets. Dr. Green, how can you diagnose someone as an obsessive compulsive disorder and then act as though I had some choice about barging in? This stay-at-home novelist consistently churns out bestsellers. As likable as he is to the public though, the reality is that he's a misanthropic hermit, extremely OCD, and neurotically superstitious. Mm -hmm. A prime example of this is his constant avoidance of stepping on cracks in the pavement. And considering he lives in New York, that's kinda tough. Don't touch! Hey. One day, Melvin decides he wants to get closer to a waitress named Carol, but his neurotic behavior distances him from her. And while he seems to ultimately get the girl, we're still left wondering by film's end whether or not Melvin is completely over his phobias and superstitions. Guess that's just as good as it gets. What if this is as good as it gets? Number two, Sheldon Cooper, The Big Bang Theory. You know what this means, don't you? Break out the Red Bull, it's time to rock Mario, old school. Sheldon is an overeducated theoretical physicist and the roommate of longtime friend Leonard Hofstadter. This genius earned his first PhD at 16, tried to provide nuclear-powered electricity to his hometown, and does well by his friends. Or at least he tries. Oh, don't tell me you're afraid of germs. Not all germs. <laughs> Just the ones that will kill me. In the same way, I'm not afraid of all steak knives. It's the ones that might be plunged in my thorax. He is also obsessed with hygiene and has strict routines for almost anything in his life. While he's undoubtedly intellectually brilliant, he has a difficult time grasping sarcasm. What's wrong with the bathroom here? 
pneumococcus, streptococcus, staphylococcus, and other assorted caucuses. And while his apparent emotional disconnect from the rest of the world and his attempts of trying to ameliorate this make him an oddball, we can't help but admire him all the same. Is there a station coming up where I can board your giggling train of thought? Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Oh, hey boy! Guess what? It's time for a bet! What are your hangers doing in this closet? Answer me! Help me, please. You've got to consider professional help, Mark. A proper course of therapy. Uh, Owen Flanagan? Here, here, here. Here, here. Owen has obsessive compulsive disorder. He says everything like five times. <laughs> Number one, Howard Hughes, the aviator. Uh, I don't know if you remember me. My name's Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes may have been a businessman, a filmmaker, and an aviator, but he was also excessively neurotic, had an overheightened case of OCD, and could get extremely jealous. What? What was that? You just sniggered. No, no. As a boy, he was constantly afraid of his mother dying from various diseases. As an adult, things didn't seem to change too much as he grew increasingly paranoid. Show me all the blue, show me all the blueprints. <laughs> show me all the blueprints. Show me all the blueprints, show me all the blueprints. Examples? His film counterpart taps the phone and plants microphones to keep track of his girlfriend, Ava Gardner. He gets extremely upset and traumatized when the FBI searches and tracks dirt through his home and has even been found washing his hands till they bleed. He may not have been the easiest person to relate to on our list, but he's certainly the most hard to forget. The way of the future. The way of the future. So, do you agree with our list? Thanks. Who are your favorite OCD characters in movies and television? Why can't I sit on you? Why? For more excellent top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Please don't leave, because if you do, you'll never come back in again, no matter what you say or ask or do. Thank <music> you.